Tomo News presents Laser Beams. Rafael Advanced Defense Systems unveiled its latest missile defense system last week at the Singapore Air Show, Asia's largest aerospace and defense event. The land-based system created by the state-owned Israeli arms maker demolishes incoming missiles using high-energy lasers. The system, known as Iron Beam, uses air defense radar to detect incoming missiles. At closer range, a thermal camera carries out the missile tracking. When properly engaged with the incoming projectile, the system emits two lasers, reaching up to hundreds of kilowatts to destroy the target. Rafael Advanced Defense Systems said the Iron Beam lasers have been shooting down more than 90% of their targets during test trials. This is how lasers can turn your brown eyes blue. You used to be able to change your eye color from brown to blue only by wearing colored contacts. But now there's a medical procedure that can do that for you, permanently. The cost? Around $5,000. Southern California inventor Greg Homer said he and a team of ophthalmologists have developed a procedure that can surgically turn brown eyes blue. Brown-eyed people actually have blue irises, but the blue is obscured by a layer of brown pigment. Homer explained to CNN that if the layer of brown pigment is not there, then light can enter a part of the eye called the stroma. Once light scatters inside the stroma, only the light with the shortest wavelengths, blue light, is reflected back. The 20-second laser procedure removes the superficial layer of brown pigments by causing the eyeball to shed pigments that will never regenerate. People who undergo the surgery won't see any change immediately, as the procedure takes several weeks to show. The surgery is currently undergoing human testing in Costa Rica and Mexico through Homer's company, Stroma Medical. Currently, there are no known long-term adverse effects of the procedure, but Homer has said it's too early to say for sure. NASA's laser-powered spacecraft aims to reach Mars in 72 hours. NASA scientist Philip Lubin is working on perfecting laser technology that could propel a light spacecraft to Mars in as little as three days. Photons emitted from excited atoms in a laser have energy and momentum, which forms the basis of laser-based propulsion. Photons are released in a beam from a laser. When photons from a laser array reflect off an object, their energy is translated into a push that's capable of moving objects like a spacecraft. Rather than using a giant laser a la the Death Stars, researchers imagine an array made up of a large number of amplifiers that sync up and act like one big laser. The spacecraft launched with this technology will include a robotic probe and a large reflective sail. The spacecraft will be light because no fuel is needed. And this spacecraft could be accelerated to 30% the speed of light, which was previously unheard of. This technology could produce enough momentum to get a robotic spacecraft to Mars in three days and send a manned shuttle to Mars in a month. Using photonic propulsion, interstellar travel may be possible, and we could get a probe to Earth's nearest star, Alpha Centauri, in as little as 15 years. In comparison, our current technology takes four to eight months to get to Mars. It took 37 years for the Voyager 1 spacecraft to reach the edge of our solar system. Scientists hope to launch interstellar fleet of laser-propelled spacecraft. A hit team of renowned scientists, Silicon Valley elites, and a billionaire businessman have come together to launch a fleet of postage stamp-sized interstellar spacecraft. Sounds like the pitch for a bad Bond movie, right? Well, if it was, 007 would have his hands full. Because this team includes Scientist Supreme Dr. Stephen Hawking, Russian billionaire Yuri Milner, and Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. All technology, including the camera for the tiny interstellar spacecraft, will be placed inside a postage stamp-sized chip. Called a star chip, this device would come with a light sail to form a nanocraft. The sail has a surface that would use Earth-based laser light to propel it along. The lasers would come from a mile-wide laser array potentially situated 13,000 feet above sea level in the Atacama Desert in South America. Using light energy from the 100-gigawatt laser array, the team plans to send a fleet of these nanocrafts to our closest star system, Alpha Centauri. If successful, a nanocraft could travel at 20% of the speed of light, or 134.2 million miles per hour, using laser light propulsion. At that speed, a nanocraft could traverse the 25 trillion miles to Alpha Centauri in a matter of decades, while a current spacecraft would take thousands of years. Dubbed Breakthrough Starshot, Milner has invested around $100 million in the nanocraft concept. However, it will still potentially cost billions and could take up to 30 years to get a swarm of the devices into space if the concept is shown to be successful. 
Buffalo Bills under attack by laser-wielding NFL fans. The Buffalo Bills beat the Detroit Lions 17-14 on Sunday, but one Lions fan tried to turn the tables using technology. What, huh, you ask? That's right, lasers. Bills quarterback Kyle Orton missed a pass after being shot in the face with a green laser. Later, the Bills were down 11 points when Colton Schmidt was blasted while holding for a 50-yard field goal attempt, causing Dan Carpenter's kick to go way, way off. Security never found the mystery laser lion, who turned out to be this guy, Marco Bezlatch, who bragged about his lasering before and during the game on Twitter. Now the NFL is saying Bezlatch could get a lifetime ban from attending games. And he'll need more than a laser if any Bills fans get a hold of him. Ouch. How to hide the Earth from aliens. Last week, Columbia University researchers published a paper saying laser beams could disrupt alien observations of Earth. Or if you will, lasers could cloak and thereby hide Earth from any human-hungry ETs. The idea borrows from NASA tech, which is already in space. NASA's Kepler Space Telescope detects new planets by observing the dips in light from stars they pass in front of. The Columbia guys say to make Earth invisible in this sense, you fill in the missing starlight. It's here where the lasers come in. By beaming 30 megawatt space-based lasers for 10 hours a year, the researchers say we could theoretically fill this light gap. And make ourselves invisible to all those curious alien civilizations and nefarious space foreigners. Keep off our planet, y'all hear? Facebook considering lasers to connect the next billion people. Mark Zuckerberg announced on Wednesday that Facebook is considering using lasers on drones and satellites to connect the next billion people to the internet. People in developing countries are more likely to connect to the internet using mobile phones instead of computers. Initially, Facebook considered satellites which work best for low density areas. For suburban areas, the company is considering using drones which fly at a much higher altitude than commercial airplanes at around 20,000 meters. These drones, which have a wingspan greater than that of a Boeing 737, are solar powered and can remain airborne for months. On both the satellites and drones, Facebook would use lasers to beam data through the air and provide high-speed connectivity similar to that of fiber optic networks. According to Zuckerberg, the laser beams won't actually be visible but will allow users to send data at dramatically improved speeds over longer distances. Scientists propose using lasers to clean up space junk. German scientists have proposed using laser pulses to clean up small, irregular shaped space debris. According to NASA, there are nearly 3,000 tons of space debris in the low Earth orbit. Whipple shields protect most spacecraft from debris up to 1 centimeter in diameter. However, debris between 1 and 10 centimeters are particularly dangerous, as they cannot be dodged or blocked. One way to clean up the debris is by using high-energy laser pulses to change the orbit of the debris, leading it to re-enter the atmosphere and burn up. Space debris travel at speeds up to 28,000 kilometers per hour, which is fast enough for a small piece of debris to damage a satellite or a spacecraft. NASA plans to revolutionize space communications with the launch of its Lunar Laser Communication Demonstration. Since space communication was launched in the 50s, it has used radio frequency. The Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer would try a laser frequency for communication. Laser would use 35% less power than comparable radio frequency apparatus. Laser would send six times more data than radio and would offer increased signal stability. If successful, the laser technology would allow the transmission of high definition and 3D imaging. It would be the first substantial advancement in space communication since the launch of Sputnik.